Um, just to say that um, this, this um, survey was carried out uh, by the INMO uh, because it is an important issue for, for members. Um, the lead for the survey was um, Neve Adams and, uh, and myself. Um, we also linked with the menopause hub, so many of the menopause related questions um, came from the menopause hub as the devisors. Um, so just uh, uh, just to give you an indication of sort of the advice that we, we, we got for the survey. So just to say that I'm just going to go through the results um, uh, that, that we uh, found in terms of our survey. Um, but give you a bit of background, just to say that uh, there's nearly 350,000 women employed in, a, in, uh, in, in Ireland um, between the age of 45 and 64, and that's from 1960, uh, of the 2016 CSO figures. Um, Loretta has already gone through much of this stuff in terms of the average age of women's menopause, 51, um, and a significant number of women in the workforce are working through their menopause transition. Um, it is an important issue for the INMO. It's an important issue because we're predominantly um, a uh, female uh, profession, uh, both in nursing and midwifery, and that's reflected in the INMO uh, membership and also the registrants of um, NMBI as well. So we thought that it was important to take a lead, and we have taken a lead in this area. We were one of the first organisations in the country to raise this issue and to start raising the profile of menopause as, as in the workplace as an issue. And we were right at the start, just before the menopause hub um, was established, working with Loretta at that point. So our survey was um, conducted over about 10 days, uh, just to give you the short period, uh, at the end of September, October. So this was um, an online survey of nurse and midwives in Ireland. Um, and we asked menopause specific questions, which I'm gonna focus on in, in this presentation, but we also asked other questions which were professional quality of life. And we intend to do some more work in that area, because uh, I know some people thought it was a bit strange including the pro qual questions. But the idea was, was to try to link those responses with those of the menopause um, responses. So we will be reporting on that um, in the future. So I'm gonna focus just on the specific menopause um, questions. So our response rate was terrific. It was, it was um, for a survey conducted over a short period of time. We had you know, over a thousand people and when Loretta was talking about a similar survey that was carried out roughly over the same period of time nationally, um, I think her response rate was around about 1100. So it just shows you how important and, and that singly is a, an important um, finding in the sense of how important this is, issue is to the to nurse and midwives and how important this issue is to the Irish Nurse and Midwives Organisation. As we would expect, it was predominantly uh, female. Uh, the largest group of respondents were registered general nurses, but there was representation across the, uh, the register. Um, grades, again, representation across the register, um, the highest number in senior enhanced nurses and midwives, but also clinical nurse manager twos, and we can see the representation um, across all of the grades, really even the student grade, just to emphasize that. Um, the age group, as we might expect, um, sort of fall, fell between sort of um, 41 um, up to 65. The biggest group, 85, 84% of respondents was in the 46 to 60 age group. Um, again, which sort of reflects uh, the profile of uh, perimenopause um, and probably tells you something that this isn't necessarily a representative survey of all nurses and midwives in Ireland, but it's a self-selected response of um, nurse and midwives that felt that menopause was an important issue for them. Hence why we're seeing that difference in terms of the focus on that particular age group. Um, there's just some information on um, other demographics. Um, just outline sort of high levels of education in nurse and midwifery, the split in terms of level eight, level nine and level 10. We might expect that predominantly the responses in the public sector, and they were also responses across all areas of healthcare, highest number in care of the older person. 
So just to go on to, on to um, the results, uh, when we asked the question, what best describes your menopause status, we found that um, 46 percent, almost half, were uh, postmenopausal, which, as Loretta was saying, um, still um, falls within um, the general sphere of menopause. And the next biggest category was 35 percent, so over a third were perimenopause. And then we can see representation uh, to a smaller level in other areas such as surgical, early menopause, um, just a different categorization of a and premature menopause as well. Um, how much education information did you uh, have about menopause? And we can see the largest groups are um, a little, none at all, and moderate. That sends a, a clear message, even within a health professional group, of the need for raising profile and also um, of increasing education in the area of menopause across society, not just for nurses and midwives, but it is a clear in indication from those results. Um, we asked, do you have menopausal symptoms? And again, overwhelmingly, nearly 90% um, of respondents um, would experience menopausal symptoms. So again, underline how important this issue was. So we wanted to ask um, how the participants described their symptoms. And we can see the largest group is moderate, but again, nearly 20%, one fifth, described them as severe and debilitating. Again, underline why this is an important issue. And I keep on repeating that, that this is an issue that's often neglected and just underlines why this is an important issue for women in society, but also for nurses and midwives, which is the group that we represent. Now, we also asked the question in terms of the workplace, because it is a workplace survey, um, do menopausal symptoms affect you while you're at work? And again, an absolutely uh, unambiguous and clear message that underlines that this is a workplace issue. 90% said yes, and we can see that 10% said no. So if we wanted to um, ask, is, is it something that we need to address? There is the clear message. Yes, it is an issue that is important and needs to be addressed by uh, employers. Have you missed work? So this is slightly surprising when I looked at this because you would have thought that if you have 90% with symptoms and moderate to um, severe and debilitating, that you might expect that, um, that participants, women um, with menopausal symptoms would um, be missing work. But we can see um, the commitment again, 83% haven't missed work. That's not necessarily a positive thing, but it's, again, gives us some information about commitment of nurses to work. So how confident, so a lot of these questions are related and can be linked to what Loretta found in her survey. How confident would you feel discussing um, your menopause in the workplace? Um, and again, we can see approaching 40% are saying they wouldn't be um, comfortable. Um, somewhat, again, a third. So again, this raises an issue in terms of how important it is to create menopause-friendly workplaces. Um, how confident would you feel discussing with your line manager? Again, similar type figures, 40%, not very, third, um, somewhat. Would you like to see your organization introduce menopause training? Again, clear message here, approaching 90%. Yes, um, there needs to be more awareness within the workplace and training of staff, both across all staff, but particularly in terms of um, managers. So would you like to see your organization introduce, implement a menopause policy. This has been a demand from the INMO since 2019 with the release of our position statement. Again, approaching 90% believe that organizations need to have a clear policy that needs to be not just a policy, but also um, implemented as well. So just to finish off, just on a, a, a few points, and this is taken from a menopause guide and position statement that we published in October 2019 after consultation with the membership. Um, 
as uh, Phil outlined and it's in, in the position statement, there are over 300,000 women working in Ireland between the age of 45 and 64. And around 80% of those will experience symptoms leading up to menopause. Um, and what we would like uh, is, uh, is, is to work with employers to create positive employment policies. It is an important issue for us, and it is something that we will continue to camp, campaign on. So the INMO believes that the profile of menopause in the workplace needs to be acknowledged, recognised as an important occupational issue, and for resources to be allocated uh, to support in, um, all women within the workplace. And this comes to my final slide. Um, the INMO calls on the wider trade union movement to embrace and campaign for greater recognition and support um, on this issue. Um, and it calls upon all healthcare employees in both public and private sectors to develop um, menopause friendly workplaces that recognize the importance of menopause. And these include clear policies, um, training and dedication, uh, the dedicated resources to support um, women experiencing menopause. And that's it. Apologies for the um, rush, because I know I only had a short period of time. I've gone over by about two minutes, one minute maybe. Um, so that's just to outline. And I, I suppose that the last thing I want to say is that um, this survey was at the end of the process. This is part of the process. And we will continue to, to raise this issue and advocate on behalf of our members um, over the coming months and into the future.